The first reason I think mom came is because our dad passed away. I can only imagine. I mean, she was eight and a half months pregnant with five kids. I mean, she left all of us just because she wanted to support us, giving us a shelter, food, and why not? What is the, like, the memory, the most important memory I think you have from Mexico? Like, what do you remember, like, the most, all the time? I think it's probably not the, a nice memory, but the thing I remember the most was the fact that no matter how old you were, you had to work and support yourself. We had to go take care of animals. We had to fetch our own food kind of thing. It was like hunter-gathering style, I suppose. But <laughs> I think that's one of the things that makes me happy because having that ability to just cope with yourself at such a young age gives you that another perspective of the way things should work. And I think that's the reason I'm here right now. How does a little boy from a little town that I know that has like about 30 houses... I actually went on Google and, like, Google the map, you know? Have you done that? Yes, I have Google the map. <laughs> how, how does it feel to, to be here? The change, just migrating, was a big experience. I didn't get to cross the easy way. It wasn't through the line, like they say. And I had to walk along with my uncle. And I was only eight years old. I mean, when you cross the border, you're just like, dude, you might die. Like, yeah. we're crossing a desert, no water, no nothing, for a long day. It's like... You're facing death, and you're happy to do so just because you're going to get to meet your family, your mother that you haven't seen for, like, eight years, and why not? You don't know that you're coming over here illegally. You just know that you're coming. I entered um, elementary in, like, middle of second grade. I was in ESOL classes. Went into third grade, still in ESOL classes. And after that, you know, jump out into, I guess, normal classes. You know, you get an education, but at one point, you're going to figure out, hey, I'm different from a lot of these kids like my own classmates, some of them, they're documented, they have papers, they can get a driver's license. And when it hits you, is people start driving and you can't drive even if you have perfect attendance. It's a change that you can't even imagine. Like, wow, why didn't I get to drive again? Like, I've been, I've done everything he's done. I've known him since, like, second grade. What's going on? I, feel, I know, like, through high school you were thinking about, oh, how am I going to make it to college? Like, how did you feel your senior year, like, trying to figure out and getting close doors all the time because of just nine digits. The possibilities that you are going to go to college are very slim just because you don't have a social security number or documents that prove that you're an American. If you're a good student, you're supposed to go to college. But all this time you've been going to school, you've learned the language, you've adapted to the culture. That to me was like, wow, why have I been doing like all of this work, trying so hard to keep my grades up and just do everything right? Do I keep trying? Am I really going to get to college? Should I just drop out or should I continue to do it and do it even better because my opportunities are so limited that I have to be the best regardless of who I'm facing, you know? It motivated me in the end. Like, if you're willing to do something and you're working for it, of course you're going to get it. I mean, I'm a living proof because I don't have documents and I came here illegally, but of course I'm going to go to college, a good college actually, and was getting 95% of it paid for. The fact that I had to work for it and I know what it cost me, that's what made me proud. We actually built a home here, and now, you know, with the things that are going on, especially with HB 87 and why not, people are getting scared, they're leaving. It's it's very difficult. Things have changed so drastically. And, like, Yerri Gonzalez, you know, I went to West Power Breakfast the other day, and he was just saying, like, if you let fear control you, you don't, basically, you don't have anything. So don't let fear control you. Just mm-hmm. go for what you want, like that's, you did. Like, you went for it, right? Even though you were illegal, you went. And you, you're going to college, right? So if we were to leave this country for just because we're, you know, we have fear of what could happen to us, then we're not facing it. We're just running away from the problem. And why not try to solve it? 